Now that the Corvette trilogy is over, we have two videos you cannot miss. This week, we found an abandoned Ford Mustang that's been sitting for the last 12 years. But wait, pause. I said two videos. This is the first one, but what could be the second? Let's just say in the mid-1960s, there were two car companies, Ford being one of them, that were fighting over something. And yeah, next week, we found something that's once in a lifetime for YouTube, but I wonder what it could be. Anyway, let's check out part one of this duo. Oh man, another day. Another abandoned car. This thing is roach. So this is a 2003 Terminator Cobra. Big motor, super fast. Or it's just a V6 <laughs> Mustang convertible. But hey, it needs love and we're here to clean it up. I don't think I've ever seen the headlights so green. Yeah, the visibility, uh, not great on this one. Do you think at night it like actually displays like green? I think it shoots it out like a strobe light. We did that other red Mustang a couple months ago out of that barn. Yeah. This thing's just a little bit newer, a different body style. I actually really like the what they did on the hood of this car. It looks really aggressive, especially for being a V6 car. So it looks like we're missing a wing, but I'm told that there's a lot of parts in the car. We're not going to go through it yet. We're going to leave those surprises for when we're back at the shop. But we got to get it in the trailer to get it back to the shop. So uh, fingers crossed these wheels aren't locked up. All right, I just got the Mustang in neutral. I don't want to sit in this thing. It's super gross, but we're about to start pulling it in. We'll see if these tires unlock, but uh, you never know. Ah, I don't think we're going to be so lucky. It's not rolling, Mike. <laughs> All right, so we have the V6 convertible Mustang back at the shop. And uh, this is also our second time doing the intro because our mics cut out and uh, we lost the audio. So anyways, what I had said the first time around, this is the quintessential high schooler's car, meaning that it looks crazy. It has a lot of bark, not a lot of bite. We're talking about a motor that probably has 190, 200 horsepower max, but then you get this sweet, massive front hood scoop. That's fake. You have these side vents to cool the brakes, but they are also fake. Uh, and then you have a wing that's no longer on the car uh, and the convertible top so you can drop the top and cruise into the uh, high school parking lot looking real cool. Unlike RJ, I really do like the SN95 Mustang and this is the facelifted model which I much prefer due to Mustangs like the Terminator Mustang or the Celine Mustang. I just think the front end is so much more aggressive. Yes, the hood scoop is fake but it makes this car look so aggressive and powerful. I really do enjoy that. And for being a young kid's first car, this is a really cool looking car. And again, like RJ said, this car had about 190 horsepower from the factory. So you're not gonna slide into anybody, if you know what I'm saying. The only thing that would make this high schooler's car cooler is black plastic up wheels, which is par for the course for a vehicle like this. So I don't agree with black plastic dip wheels, even though at one point in time, I did have a car, my first car, with plastic dip wheels. Can we put a picture up somewhere on the screen right now of Mike's first I'll, car? I'll try to find one, a good one, uh, <laughs> especially with those wheels. I changed wheels a lot on that car, so they, it was a different time. Different time. He drove an Audi A4 that he painted blue pinstripes on each side and then put his last name across the windshield. Yeah. It had big subwoofers and made lots of noise. I won awards with that car in multiple states, and also the banner was for my father, and me and him painted that on our driveway when I was 15 years old, and let me tell you, it's better than some of the paint I see today. On to the back of the Mustang. I truly love the back end due to the fact of these tail lights. This is my favorite part, how they always have the three-tier blinker and the design that they did here on the SN95 facelift. The older cars had kind of like this melded in design. It didn't have these sharp edges that this car does have, or as wide and aggressive as a stance. And I just think it was such a great update on this car. If you figure that this is a base car, the styling cues look like the fastest cars that they made from that time period. The Cobra, or uh, was the Terminator part of the The Terminator too? Cobra, the, the SVT, yeah. Celines. They all really have, I've worked on these cars, uh, Cobras from this generation before, and aside from you know the fake hood scoops, there's very minimal difference. I mean, the, I'm pretty sure the wheel arches, maybe that's a little bit wider, but aside from like minor, minor differences, mm -hmm. you know, you look really cool driving uh, what is, you know, a base model car. Yeah, they had slightly different designs of bumpers and whatnot but to the untrained eye, you wouldn't know the difference between a di one Mustang and another. For a young guy or a young gal to have a cool car that looks the part but isn't, you know, that dangerous, I think these are great cars, man. First, we're gonna pop these uh, windshield wiper blades off. First, we're gonna do that, vacuum everything up, and uh, start on the wheels. Oh 
All right, as you guys can clearly see, these wheels are in some dire need of help. But I'm missing some caps here. I'm hoping they're in the car. But we're gonna take a look, see if I can find them. Let's see. This is my first, oh, actually, what am I talking about? They're right here. This is good. <laughs> Ooh. We'll explore that more later, but let's get these guys out of here. I don't know what material these are made out of. Brent, if you could pick this up. This must have been in the failing clear coat. Oof. Oh, it's because it's oxidized aluminum. Well, we're gonna try to clean this up as best as we can and get this wheel haul cleaned up. Now we're gonna start pressure washing off the car. We're gonna use Puro as a pre-rinse. And if you guys don't have Puro and you need a pre-rinse or an all-purpose cleaner, I highly recommend trying it out. It's safe on your paint and it's safe inside your car. So if you're interested, it's in the link in the description. And lastly, in case you were really wondering if you should buy Puro or not, I think this should make up your mind.
Now that the car rinsed off, we're gonna go ahead and apply some Puro to the soft top, and then we're gonna use a drill brush to agitate it and spray it all away. That way, when we go to actually wash the car, the soft top's already taken care of. And if you're ever gonna use a drill brush on a soft top, make sure you use the white one, which is the absolute softest bristles, with very, very little pressure because you do not wanna risk ripping it. You're only trying to clean it up. All right, there's this stuff all over the headlight and the paint that didn't seem to come off with the pressure washer. Do you know what it is? I don't know, it's some kind of organic matter, vine, plant, something, some kind of organism that attaches itself using like these little sap balls and then it grows off of plastic paint. I've seen it on rubber tires before. It's super resilient and the only way I've ever found to actually get it off is to use a plastic scraper and knock off the sap or whatever this is that's attaching it to this substrate, scrape it off and then wipe off the extra residue with a solvent and that's the best way I've found to attack it. But I have no idea what this stuff is. So if you do know, drop it in the comments below so I stop calling it organic matter. In my opinion, I don't think any American muscle car should come with a V6 engine. So I'm gonna start off on a bad note and say that I hate this engine and I think it's ugly and it's probably locked up. He's right in some senses, but <laughs> <laughs> this engine is pretty easy to work on. It's got a lot of space. That's a nice attribute. Also, it's 3.8 liters, so it's not that small. Producing 190 horsepower, to today's standard, it's low. <laughs> to today's standard, it's low, but you gotta think the GT of this time with a 4.6 liter, it had about 260 horsepower. Not that much either, but it was the Cobra that was really cool. It had a 4.6 liter with a supercharger and it made 390 horsepower, over double what this makes. But again, for a high school car, perfect. Yeah, would I want my daughter driving a Cobra? No, drive <laughs> this thing, go for it, that's fine. Now that you guys have seen a lot of the car and the condition it's in, leave a comment. Do you think this is more of a parts car or should someone come and get this, replace the motor, do some work on it and get it back on the road? And if you did replace the motor, what would you even put in here? Onto the interior of the Mustang. We just took the seats out and that was a time and a half. But it's incredible when you work on these cars like this, what you can find on the interior. It's just a bunch of odd, weird stuff all the time. Let's see, we got some little pots for Brent's uh, flower patch. Got a nice little toothbrush here. That's pretty neat. I was wondering what this one was. It's got a Indian on it. What are you? Buffering. It's some kind of fragrance, I think. Oh, we got some socks, some fresh socks. These are for RJ, he needs some new socks. And then we got the Indians. Hashtag this is Cleveland. Hashtag go Cleveland. But moving on from that, all the random weird stuff that we always find in cars, we can talk about the interior just a wee bit. Pretty plain Jane Mustang here, but I kind of like the way that this flows and then the other hump on this side. I don't see that in a lot of cars and I don't remember that from earlier Mustangs or later generation Mustangs really. I think that's actually a nice touch. I mean, it's the airbag, but it kind of looks pretty cool, I think. One thing I don't like is this steering wheel. A, it's hideous, and B, it's so dirty and disgusting that I should be wearing a mask, to be completely honest with you. So what I never knew, knew about the Mustang is that they actually have this little emblem up here, which is kind of hidden. I didn't notice it until I pressure washed it away, and Ford used the Mustang emblem all over this car. 
sort of like another brand. As you guys can see, this car is filthy. The doors are completely covered in mold and the carpet's disgusting. We gotta get started getting this thing cleaned up and we're gonna start with the carpet. Now what I'm trying to figure out is how does this plastic floor piece get rust staining on it? You're going to see us attempt to get it out, which unfortunately when there's rust on plastic, it's pretty much impossible to make it 100% perfect, but I can't figure out why this happened. What I will say that you Ford guys are probably gonna love, in terms of vacuumability, the fibers in this carpet, better than a Mark IV Supra. Now it's time to remove this leopard print, or cheetah print. I, I don't know, I'm not really good with animals. I don't know about you, but I definitely don't want to be sitting on that. Now just as a little editor's note, I don't leave these off him, but I watched this clip back and I think it's really cool if you watch the Mustang in the middle of the seat, it's super faded at the beginning and then by the end, it's almost like it's popping off of the seat because of how black and how clean it is. It's so cool. Now my friends, it's time to remove those carpet stains. I don't know why I said it like that.
All right, so the Mustang is all washed and deconned. So now it's time to take a look at the paint to see what I'm working with before I start polishing. And first thing I notice is that we have a lot of marring from the clay bar process, as well as oxidation that is clouding the original color of this Mustang. And that oxidation has actually caused all that damage to that clear coat on that front bumper. So the plan of action, I think, for this car is a foam pad on a dual action polisher with a light polish just to remove that marring and that oxidation and bring back the original color and see what we come up with. Now it's time to address these absolutely destroyed headlights. They are so oxidized, you can barely even see the bulbs that lie behind all the oxidation. And to do that, I'm gonna use uh, 600 grit sandpaper wet. I'm gonna use 1500 grit sandpaper wet after the 600, and then 3000 grit sandpaper to finish it, and then use my rotary polisher to remove the sanding marks. And then hopefully we'll be able to uh, clear up these headlights and make them look as like new as possible. Coming back here to the spoiler, as we can see, where this was supposed to be bolted down is completely destroyed. Sadly, on both sides of the car, so I'm not sure how this happened, if somebody ripped this wing off. or The way that we're gonna reattach it, the easiest way will be with some 3M double-sided tape, which a lot of people uh, install aftermarket wings, typically using 3M, so this will hold on to it just fine. Not gonna be too big of a deal. So we'll kinda just measure out how much we need. This stuff is super sticky and super strong. The worst part is trying to get the protective layer off the other side right there. Yeah, it's like... Sometimes it just doesn't come off. It seriously never wants to come off. There we go. And we're on there. And now we're gonna wrap up the detail, but make sure you guys watch until the very end because I feel like if you made it this far, I wanna give you a little treat and surprise you with a little sneak peek of what's coming next week.